Greetings and welcome to Seclair. Uh, this is our weekly educational update and today we're going to be talking about food for thought. We're going to give you some food for thought, how food affects your mood. And I'm joined today by my colleague Sven, who is a professional journalist and a staff member here at Seclair, and also by my colleague uh, Omer Chaudhry, who is a psychology student at Seton Hill. And I'm welcome to have them here. So today what we're going to talk about is I don't realize if many people, when we say you have two brains, uh, I don't see any of us having two heads here. So what, what they're talking about is your brain in your head and the brain in your, in your gut, what we'll call it a gut. Okay, and actually, these two particular organs—your your brain and your guts, your intestinal tract—were formed from the same tissue during fetal development. They're connected by the tenth cranial nerve, called the vagus nerve, which runs from your brain stem to your gut. And People often talk about serotonin receptors, these type of things. Actually, the in your intestines, there are more serotonin receptors than you are than there are in your brain. And what we're going to be speaking about today is how food impacts your mood. And what I'd like to do is first of all turn it over to my uh, colleague Sven and talk about some uh, foods that alter moods in a negative way. Well, that's true, uh, and I asked to be in on this podcast today because I can speak with some firsthand experience about, uh, well, at least two of these. Uh, there's three, three what they call mood-busting foods, which is if you consume a lot of these, uh, you're definitely going to have a problem with uh, depression or anxiety or, or that sort of thing. And the number one biggest thing right now is sugar, and frequently that comes in the form of high-fructose corn syrup. Um, and uh, sugar leads to fluctuations in blood sugar that can bring on mood swings, but its role in poor mood actually goes much deeper than that. I'm reading from this um, article from uh, Dr. Mercola's website, actually, a very well-respected doctor uh, on this subject. <clears throat> and sugar uh, contributes to insulin and leptin resistance and impaired signaling, which play a significant role in your mental health. Uh, my first-hand experience with this was um, actually in a hospital setting. Uh, I generally, for the most of the last 20 years, have avoided uh, excess sugar. I don't eat high fructose corn syrup at all if I can help it. Uh, but I wound up in the emergency room uh, in the ICU for three days and then two days recovering from surgery. Um, and the during the entire time I was in the hospital, I was fed meals with high fructose corn syrup in every single meal. And my energy level was low. It was horrible. Now, I'd just been through some fairly major surgery, and I was on new meds for high blood pressure. But I swear to you, the day I got out of the hospital and uh, I got a lovingly prepared, wholesome, plant-based, no-sugar meal, I swear my energy level increased dramatically, my mood improved dramatically just from one meal after five days of being fed sugar. So it really has a dramatic impact. And, and really the way to find out about that is to just stop consuming it for a period of time and see how you feel. And then you know, 30 days is what they say for the um, uh, really get it out of your system. Could you, then, tell me, could you tell me some foods that sugar is not in? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the processed anything, foods. Yeah, any, ba well, basically, number three here is processed foods, uh, and we're going to get to that. But anything that doesn't have a label, basically, <laughs> doesn't have sugar in it. If it comes out of the ground, eat it the way it comes out of the ground. Uh, I know several people are on a diet of don't buy anything with a label, and don't buy any food that you see advertised on TV. Because if they have enough money to advertise it on TV, the chances are they haven't really done the work on making it a good, wholesome, uh, prepared food. Number two on the list is glutens, and I, and I can speak to that also very, very keenly. Um, I gave up glutens about two years ago, and I lost 35 pounds. I lost most of my depression, most of my anxiety, my achy joints went away, my GI problems all went away, and glutens 
is a protein found in grain such as wheat, rye, and barley. Barley was tripping me up for a while because I love barley soup. And it may negatively impact mood and brain health. That's straight from Dr. Mercola. So uh, that was a real tough one to give up. Uh, wheat is in everything. I mean, even in soy sauce. How, how do they get I wheat into soy sauce? I know. So you really have to be vigilant. And even when you go to like an Indian restaurant or a Chinese restaurant where you can get a lot of vegetarian food, very well prepared, you have to watch out for some of these uh, sources of glutens. And, uh, well, MSG is another problem, but I think you're probably going to cover that uh, as well, right? Yes, yes, and uh, what you're saying is read the labels on Oh, yeah, read the labels if you have to buy something with a label, but really, by and large, learn to uh, buy food and prepare food that you just buy as it comes out of the ground. You know, fresh fruits, nuts, vegetables, seeds, uh, and, you know, that sort of thing. Well, so then I've been looking at some labels, and I believe I would have to have a chemist with me to explain it to me. Basically, basically, you know. That's why avoiding food with labels entirely is often a very good strategy. Oh, it's it's commonly known, it's maybe not commonly known, that high fructose sugar suppresses a vital growth hormone called BDNF that also is linked to depression and schizophrenia. Mm. Uh, what we're getting, uh, we're giving you a lot of uh, what we maybe call bad news here. Uh, sugar tastes good, doesn't it? Sam? Well, and that's the problem, you know. Um, and actually, uh, all of my health challenges that I'm having now as an adult in my 50s started because of poor and really too much sugar as a child before the age of 10. So really, all of my problems today in my 50s were because of food choices my mother made when before I was 10 years old. And she was trying to provide you with the best she could. She did what she thought was the best thing based on the public accepted science of the day. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary often says, you mentioned advertising, Dr. Chaudhary often says that if a company has to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to convince you to buy a product, it is not worth <laughs> buying. Uh, I've always thought that about, I don't know if we should say specific brand names here, but there's certain brands of beer that just blitzkrieg you with their advertising. And I'm sorry, the beer's crap. It's just not good beer, you know. But they have spent so much money on advertising that they have convinced apparently half of the beer drinkers in America that they have good beer. Well, if you tell tell a lie loud enough and long <laughs> enough, some people will believe it. So even when your own taste buds <laughs> contradict your let's uh, let's improve the mood a little bit of this broadcast and turn it over to my colleague Omer, who's going to go over some foods that will boost your mood and that are healthy. Yeah, the different types of even I want to comment on the uh, the different foods that um, even McDonald's. When I was little, I used to eat McDonald's every single day. A Happy Meal? Were you happy, Omer? Were you happy? No. <laughs> Never happy. Never happy. Happy meals don't make you happy. No, they don't. Now my whole my everything just went down. I was just not an energetic kid. I wasn't happy in mode or anything like that. So I stayed the same. But then. My dad tried to teach me the different healthy foods of the salads. Even my mom kept pushing me and pushing me to eat fruits and vegetables and all that type of stuff. Still didn't listen to her because mm -hmm. I didn't think they were right. Even though my dad is known to eat, you know, and try to tell people have the different groups and stuff like that to help people eat better. Still didn't listen to him. But once I decided to eat salads and the fruits and like eating good healthy wheat um, breakfast in the morning that helped me get through the day so then I just started to listen to the old man and you know. <laughs> isn't it amazing how as you get older your dad gets smarter <laughs> <That's> true, <yeah. laughs> and so now the foods I like to eat are you are bananas I uh, started, I'm not a big coffee drinker, but they were saying that coffee actually um, boosts up your metabolism in your brain and releases the uh, BDNF. If you got to watch the sugar on the coffee, too. Yeah. It's really coffee without sugar is the yeah. key thing. Yeah, yeah I'm also a big uh, green tea drinker. Mm. So Jim actually started to make green tea at the office, and I every single morning I decided to go in the refrigerator and get a whole glass full of that. Best thing I ever drank. Uh, protein, 
it's a good thing as always, like the organic uh, eggs. And um, almond milk is pretty good for yourself. Uh, dark chocolate actually is good. Chocolate? For you. Yeah. Oh, rock, rock cacao or cocoa. Or, yeah. 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 Dark yeah. chocolate. Yeah, dark chocolate is actually good for you. I did not know that. Again, it's a, you got to watch the amount of sugar that's in the, mm -hmm. the different uh, products. Yeah. But you can actually get the raw cacao nibs, they call them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I frequently put those in my smoothies in the morning. And I find that really, um, it's a great antioxidant. It helps mm -hmm. with inflammation. And it tastes good. It gives you that chocolate taste without any uh, sugar. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah. We can eat chocolate, Sven. We can eat chocolate. I always <laughs> love that part. Yeah. So how, how, t tell me, maybe some of you, uh, you could... Uh, call in or maybe some of you could type in well, some of your experiences after e eating a big meal. Uh, there are so many overweight children in the United States today. Uh, how can you be overweight and malnourished at the same time? Uh, well that's uh, again probably too much sugar and not enough of the real nutrients. Um, I, I, that's not really my area of expertise but I, I know just that, threw that out you, just, you just like to talk about anything and everything. I do know that uh, one of the common misconceptions about eating healthier is that it costs more to eat healthier. And I think this is part of the good news too, that it actually can cost you a lot less to eat a plant-based diet. So could you tell me, could you tell our listeners and uh, educate us on what the difference is between organic and non-organic food? Well, organic and non-organic is really one simple thing, and that is the use of pesticides or not. And now they've actually included GMOs, the genetically modified uh, organisms, uh, as well. So when you get a certified organic, that means no pesticides. Now, there's always been a lot of controversy about whether that means it's healthier or not, or whether it's more nutritious or not. And some studies have shown that the nutritional value is the same or less, and some studies have shown that the nutritional value is way more. But the one thing that is absolutely rock solid guaranteed is you're not putting poisons of pesticides into your body. And I can remember the very first time I ate an organic carrot, and I thought I was eating a completely different vegetable from the ones I normally eat. Um, it, it really is important that we don't put toxins into our body. We have a great system internally of our body and how it cleanses itself. But it's so important that we don't put the toxins in to begin with. puts a great load on your kidneys and your liver to try to detox these things, which is drawing energy from the, your vitality. Right. Uh, I was listening to a comic on uh, the radio, and he said, I already eat organic. And he says, I looked up organic in the dictionary, and it said, beside it, it said, extremely expensive. That may not be the case. Then. That's not the case, actually. Uh, sometimes you'll find that the organic versions are a little bit more expensive, but then you have to ask yourself, how expensive is cancer? You know, how expensive is liver disease and kidney disease? And what we do here at Seclair, we try to be proactive rather than reactive with people's health. You break a finger, you break an arm, you get a wound, you get sick, you go to the doctor, they fix you, they're reactive. Well, we're trying to do is attempt to offer enhancements to people's lifestyle, sensible lifestyle changes to be proactive and let's not try not to get sick. So can you can you tell us about some foods that may be uh, yeah. reasonably I got a great article here from the Huffington Post of eight ridiculously cheap superfoods less than a dollar per serving. Uh, and they go through beans, uh, any variety. Beans are actually very important for the diet. Uh, potatoes, could be very good. Uh, it looks like red potatoes. Isn't, this isn't particularly well marked here. Um, eggs are very important. 16 cents per serving. A uh, great source of uh, protein. And top notch protein it says there as well. Uh, bananas, 16 cents a piece. Can't beat that with a stick. Nature's power bar. Now, nature's power bar, isn't it? Well, you know, they put a lot of extra potassium in some of these bars, and a banana has a potassium already built in. I see a lot of power bars for sale out there, Sven. Yeah, it's, you know, people always looking for that quick fix, uh, that easy solution, and, you know, a handful of carrots or a handful of fruit can work just as well, a handful of nuts. I notice that they have always have a big pile of nuts available for here at the St. Clair, and I always make the joke that you are what you eat, so apparently, you know, here at the psychiatric clinic, we eat lots of nuts. Do you eat lots of nuts, Omar? <laughs> 
Of course. <laughs> Especially with the raisins. I thought, I thought, yeah. Oh, the raisins are great, yeah. Oh. So oats is another uh, great superfood. Uh, oats, uh, some oats, I think, do have glutens, um, but you can watch that. Uh, brown rice, a very important source of, uh, uh, of, of nutrition. Uh, three grams of fiber per half cup. Uh, you get a lot of good calories, uh, uh, lower diabetes risk than white rice, helps lower blood pressure. Canned tuna, um, I've probably some issues around um, whether they in, catch any dolphins or anything, but basically uh, tuna is a great source of um, iron, protein, and healthy fats. Also very important for uh, boosting your brain power and heart problems is to have those healthy fats. And uh, the last one on the list is cabbage, which I've never actually been a big cabbage. Even I'm, I'm part Irish, and I just, uh, but uh, you know, corned beef and cabbage do without the corned beef, I guess. I guess this is kind of an aside, but uh, you're talking about tuna, and I, for those, I'm going to be showing my age now. I'm in the Three Stooges when uh, Larry told Mo that uh, fish is brain food, and Mo informed Larry that he should eat a whale, uh, which is not a fish anyway. <laughs> So, so what we're to, what we're talking about here is how food affects your mood. When things are not right below your neck, things are not right above your neck. When things are not right above your neck, things are not right below your neck. Um, so, you may want to take a look, step outside the bubble a bit, and observe this person, which would be you. Observe their eating habits. Observe them and be not judgmental and. Exactly what to I, I think too many people get used to being sluggish and having low energy and having foggy thinking. And if we think if we just consume enough caffeine, then we'll be fine. And maybe we get that gets us through the day and everything. But you know, I found that a, a, a good smoothie in the morning with lots of live food during the day, a big salad at lunch, uh, and you know, keeping away from the red meat uh, and for me, glutens. Um, I have I have more energy now at the age of 54 than I think I did through most of my 30s and possibly some of my 40s. I mean, I've really you know especially these last couple of years really watching the diet and uh, it makes such a big difference. And we can be so much more alive and energetic and uh, effective and useful for ourselves and for our family and for the community. It's hard to do that though when your taste buds are <laughs> to that good, well, it's, delicious, it's greasy really, foods. Yeah, it's really training right. your, your taste buds. Is it? Right. And what we do here at Seclair is often we attempt to introduce new skills. It's one of the most difficult tasks is is unlearning old thought patterns and behaviors, Finn, over over a lifetime. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, they're, they're, these are patterns from childhood, so yes. they, they are difficult to, to change those habits. However, they can be changed. They can be changed. And there and there is hope. Uh, and when you get when you get out of that cloud, when you, especially for me after a month of no glutens, it was so obvious to me how much better I felt that it was like I'm never going back. You know, I'm tempted by beer once in a while, but basically I stay away from it as much as I can. So. Especially those ones that spend all that money on advertising. That's right. <laughs> especially those ones. <laughs> so. Are we done here, or what are we doing here? We're going to be we're going to be wrapping up uh, the program okay. for today. All right, um, Omer and James and myself, Sven Hosford. I really appreciate uh, all of you tuning in, and please follow Saint Clair on Google Plus on Facebook, and join us live Mondays around noon, so you can ask your own questions for us to answer during our discussions. Stay tuned for these and other great articles and videos at www.sayclair.com and on our YouTube page. And as always, be good to yourself.